Hello everyone, my name is Flair Blitz and welcome back to Snowdome. Amidst the heavy pouring rain, the streets are cleared of people. Thunderous splatting is all that can be heard on the streets. Beneath the grey sky, the world before me is shrouded in darkness. For a moment I thought it was midnight. My clothes, drenched by rain, cling tightly to my body. A cold breeze steeps in and I shiver uncontrollably. But my mind has never been clearer. There is only one place I have to go, to build the boat. When the asphalt road suddenly gives way to muddy sand, I need to slip and fall to the ground. I only arrived at the beach. I ran all the way from the convenience store. Normally, a journey I take by tram. I drag my heavy feet across the sand, stepping across the muddled landscape. A train of thoughts keep running in my mind, like a rusty cog struggling to rotate. Aju's existence is mirrored in suspicion. She is like an elegant lotus flower, blooming in a swamp covered in chaos and darkness. I was aware of the swamp all along, but I chose to ignore it. There is nothing as fragile as true happiness, because it's built on a series of assumptions. Once the knife of doubt is stabbed into one of the gaps, the whole building can suddenly collapse. Lakshian forced me to face this problem. She also forced me to figure out what Aishu's means to me. Eventually, the ruins once again appear before my eyes. Despite having withstood sorry, countless years without collapsing, under the wind and rain, the structure appears more fragile than ever. I walk into the room to take cover from the rain. Just as I thought, A Xu is sitting on the side of her bed, her body veiled in shadows. That's when I realize my mouth is dry and my legs are wobbly. Her spotless hair, skin and one-piece dress is a shimmering spectacle under the night sky. But I sense she is a bit different today. The girl in front of me seems to be have peeled away her own shell, exposing something from the inside. I try to call out her name. Aishu! Yan, you're early today. Hmm, you're still here. Come to think of it, I normally come here to meet Aishu at, her, at the beach after work. The Aishu I'm seeing now, is she real or fake? I'm not sure. How can someone figure out if they're in a dream? Especially when they don't want to wake up. I don't want to know the answer. Aju lowers her head and fiddles with a little crab that's crawling on the ground. When it's raining, these little buddies all crawl out. Normally it's hard to spot them, so they caught my attention. I've been looking at it and lost track of time. Hey Aju. Mm-hmm. How should I say it? There's something different about you today. Is there? Aju stretches her body like a swan extending out his neck. At the moment, I don't feel like meeting people. Don't feel like meeting people. Right, I sometimes feel down. Even I think I look terrible. If someone saw how terrible I look, they'd probably dislike me. That's what we call prejudiced. That's why I don't feel like meeting anyone right now. I'm the only anyone here. Hearing my playful words, her lips curl up. But her smile doesn't look as innocent as before. Instead, under the shadow of the night, it lets off a mysterious air. I suddenly realized something. That was how you looked when I first saw you. Let me think. I guess so. I don't remember about the day I met you. What was I like back then? I probably will never tell her how attractive her don't feel like meeting anyone look was to me. That mysterious, dazzling smile was deeply imprinted into my heart. I'm always worried that you will suddenly vanish. Look, we're the real person here, and you're the fragment inside our mind, okay? It's not us that will disappear first, it would have to be you. That's why I don't want you to dislike me. That's the kind of question that would allow someone who barely knows you to have more distrust in you because you kind of 
erupting something inside that head of yours. Me too. Sometimes I worry that you'll disappear. I won't disappear as long as you don't make me disappear. What do you mean by that? Eishu finally returns to a relaxed smile. The tension on my shoulders is also relaxed. Alright, let's chat. Haven't we already been doing that already? Asia and I tuck ourselves inside the ruins. The rain continues pouring down, isolating us from our surroundings, as if we're the only two people left in this world. What do you usually do when I'm not around? That is a great question. Just hang around nearby, take a walk. If the weather's no good, then I'll go to sleep early. If you're around here are alien... Of course. Of course they're alien controlled. What else could there be besides aliens controlling the entire population of Pinghu Island? I don't have anywhere else to go. So everything you said, are they real? About aliens and successors? Hmm, they're all real. I won't lie to you. Yeah, okay. It's more ordinary than I've imagined. You'd probably be disappointed once you know about this. I have a really boring life. You probably don't like it. Not disappointed. I'm much more relaxed now. But you live here. In this room. There are a few more rooms downstairs. They are all storage rooms. Those rooms are a bit messy. But if you want to take a look, I can bring you there. And then Aju begins taking me on a tour around the ruins. They all look decapitated. Right, what do you usually eat? There are military rations stored. Enough for a platoon to survive on a month. Usually I'll come here to find things to eat. A platoon? That's 30 people? Correct! This is the knowledge of a successor. Yeah, okay. They're mostly compressed biscuits or canned meat. There are some sweets. Some have orange flavor, some are grape flavored. On Monday, they have beef cans. Tuesday is pork, Wednesday is chicken. I only have to check the flavor on the can to know which day it is. Isn't it convenient? Whoa, what an interesting way to spend your time. Mmm, there's a piece of chocolate here. Do you want to try it? It shouldn't taste that bad for someone who's trying it out for the first time. What is the expiry date? Our conversation gets interrupted as I chew on a piece of chocolate and the canned fish. The flavour is very light, not as saucy as the ones in the convenience store, not as fishy as the ones from the hot pot. But the flavour remains consistently. I'm afraid only flavours as light as this can survive the countless years in these ruins. Inside one of the storage rooms, I can see a shocking number of white one-piece dresses. Ah, is this how she keeps on constantly having a clean one-piece dress? The dresses are stored items too, but now only I'm wearing them. It feels a bit wasted on me. There's so many of them. You changed your new one every day? At first I wanted to wash it, but I gave up immediately. Washing clothes is such a ha- Yes, it is a hassle, but it is one of those things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, no, you do it at least once or twice a week. Besides, there are so many dresses here. Once I've worn half of the dresses, I'll start washing them. Is that water for washing clothes? Don't tell me you use seawater. There's a system that automatically generates fresh water. Okay, that sounds so surreal. It's just transforming seawater into fresh water. The energy comes from the sea. And guess what? The water also comes from the sea. Once you explain it that way, it doesn't sound surreal anymore. But you really know a lot. Of course, because... Ah, oh, goodness sakes. Seeing how Asia is boasting about herself, the suspicion in my heart has all but fate. No, the, heart, the, the suspicion should be amplified by this point. Hmm. Today you introduced me to a lot of new stuff. Even if you ask me 10,000 questions, I can still answer all... Yeah, right. Okay, what is the meaning of life? Why does gravity... <laughs> Why does gravity go down and not up? Um, what's going to happen in the next five years? Honestly, the questions that Luxia mentioned have all been answered. But there's still one suspicion in my head. 
No, I can't say it's a doubt in my mind. It's just something that needs to... That's near to a delusion, sorry. Why would a girl as innocent and pure as Asia appear in front of me? She pulled out... Sorry, she pulled me out of my dull, boring life. And there's no value in saving me. Maybe this is a miracle. But I've already had enough of how cold the world is treating me. How could there be a miracle in this world? Asia is probably a rich guy's daughter. Tomorrow, a butler in a black tuxedo will be flying a helicopter over to pick her up, and I'll be all but forgotten. But I can't ask her any more questions. All I can do is to treasure every moment I have with Asia. No more questions? That's great. Asia continues to wear a smile on her face, as if she was one who, to have cleared away all the anxieties. But her smile is composed, not like her normal self. While she said she doesn't feel like meeting people, she doesn't refuse me either. Can you walk with me? I nod happily. But both of us walk over from the room. The rain has now become lighter, gently falling on the sand. We didn't bring an umbrella, but Asia boldly steps into the rain. I quickly follow her. The rain gently pelts down on my half-dried clothes, which feels surprisingly sorry, surprisingly comfortable. Asia's hair is slowly getting wet, but she doesn't seem to mind. Yeah, because you have a lot of it. There is a certain serenity to our surroundings. It's hard to imagine there was a thunderstorm just a moment ago. Where was the thunder to the thunderstorm? I hold on to Asia's hands. Her slender fingers are icy cold, but her palms are warm. As expected, Asia brings me to the forest where we are building the boat. A boat to that. The dense leaves in the forest are emitting a sulfuric scent after the thunderstorm. We carefully make our way through. When I finally see the scene before me, my relaxing mood has all but vanished in an instant. Well then, it looks like a tree collapsed. Our wooden boat no longer exists. A tree had fallen down, directly hitting its body. You should check the tree itself to make sure if it has fallen down or someone had deliberately sawed it down to destroy the boat. The wood and ropes are all scattered on the ground like splattering blood. Our boat is gone and destroyed. All our efforts for the past few days have gone to waste. Well, maybe you shouldn't put it near trees. <laughs> when it started raining, I was still asleep. Once I heard thunder, I got up right away. I ran over here. But it was already too late. I had no choice but to return home. I don't know what to do, so I could only sit there until my clothes and hair were dry. I don't know what I could do. I finally understand why Asia doesn't feel like meeting people. It's obvious. It's because she lost her boat that put so much effort into building for me. And I didn't even realize that. I'm such a hopeless dimwit. Jan, what should we do now? Should we start by picking up our equipment? I have no answers for her. We build this boat together, but when it started raining, never did I once did it cross my mind. Not even after coming to meet Asia, what's happening now in this snow globe? Isn't that the same with anything about Asia? What does she like to eat? Where does she live? If Lexion didn't answer me, I definitely would have thought about it. Wouldn't have thought about it. To me, the ruins is like a snow globe. It's something to be fiddled with after work. I keep thinking about it after work too. But that's all there is to it. Asia is like a little plastic toy locked inside this snow globe. A toy, not a person. No matter how interesting the toy is, a person will never put themselves in the shoes of a toy. How do the toys spend their days inside the snow globe when I'm not looking? It's none of my concern. If the house inside the snow globe collapses, I won't cry about it. Of course I can imagine that the little toys need it to survive. She sees it as her treasure. But I'm not the one living there. The place has no meaning to me. I don't believe in aliens. They only appear in issues of fantasies. I also don't find any value in this boat either. Okay, so what I think we've got here are two of the same characters. One that has the opposite towards what the other would feel, 
when it comes to certain criteria. For example, right now we have a version that believes that Aju is just a figment of the protagonist's imagination. Whereas the time that we spent with her just now, that was another version of us which believes everything and anything that Aju says. So what we've got here is a duality sense in which we have two different characters that look the same but think entirely differently in this kind of situation. Do they appear to be different in every kind of aspect? No, but only within this aspect when it comes to Asia at least and of course as well their perspectives in life with this snow globe theory. One of them believes that a snow globe is kind of like their own entrapment inside that snow globe and the other one feels that they are everything but the one who is trapped inside but the one on the outside the one that's controlling the snow globe and the elements that are projected in it that's why i can't answer her question i don't have the right to answer her asia keeps on twiddling the remains of a wooden boat this and that should be connected if it's broken, then it's not going to hold. If, it's go, if it goes into the water, the water will just flow in from here. The wood here is no good. I thought it was going to be fine, but it turned out different when I started building it. She speaks while repeatedly observing the broken wood, but quickly the wood slips from her hands. Asia doesn't pick them up. She only looks directly at me. Yarn. We didn't do anything wrong. What should we do now? Asia's voice is so calm that it feels frightening. She's objectively describing her failure and trying to find remedies. But yet her words do not match her emotions. But I'm unable to hold on to my frustration. I grip her shoulders tightly. Don't say anything else. Right. Asia has done everything by the book but she is missing something important. There's something she's lacking as a human. Aju, don't you feel sad? You can cry. Just cry it all out. Aju looks at me dumbfoundedly, her lips slightly quivering. My muscles feel like they're being stabbed by a kitchen knife. How can I not be sad? But if I cry every time I'm upset, it'd be a waste of... No, that's called letting out your emotions. There's no such thing as a waste of time when it comes to letting out emotions. Hearing her say that, I suddenly have an epiphany. Our perception of this world is fundamentally different. For her, the boat is gone. All her efforts has gone to waste, but it's only a minor setback in her life. I don't know why she can live by herself in the ruins, but I can imagine her life must be much harder than mine. As a child, while I never felt like I belonged in the rice fields of the country school, it wasn't painful either. After coming to work in the city, I suffered a lot, but at least I have a stable job. As for Aju, her memories are probably all filled with regrets. She's used to loss and failure. Is Aju really incapable of crying? No, she has only lost the ability to let out her pain by crying out. It's not like she, can f she can't feel pain, but she just can't express it with her tears. After her boat was destroyed, she chose to sat inside the ruins, frozen amidst the shadows. And she only had the courage to return here to face the boat remains again after I accompanied her here. It's proof that she is in a lot of pain. But Asia only writes down the happy things in her diary and only shows her happy side while chatting with me. When she's sad, she doesn't want me to see it, but she's afraid I dislike her and kept my distance from her. This must be a pattern she worked out during her life. This pattern had been so cruel to her, it's been so harsh on her that she doesn't even realize people can also help each other. Indeed. Strains of rain are surrounding Aju's lonely shadow, as if a sky had become her tears. Previously, I thought she had a carefree smile. Her fantasies were so innocent and pure. But that carefree smile is just a facade. And I was looking forward to have her fill up the hollowness in my heart, to console my 
painful soul. I always thought it's a miracle that she appeared in front of me, but this is just coincidence, and I am trampling on someone else's tragedy. And I was even anxious about this coincidence, and was doubting whether I can really be that lucky. What does she think? What am I to her? I'm just a liar, barging my way into her sad little life. I never believed in her fantasies. I'm only playing a game with her. Now that the boat is destroyed, I don't even feel pain. Aji relies on me and puts her trust in me, but she is eventually going to discover I've been deceiving her. Aji must have already walked that long, treacherous path. She keeps getting hurt until she has lost the ability to cry. Can she survive this one more time? If I once again betray her trust, can she still back up again? Can she still stand back up again? Sorry. After having enjoyed this miracle, I must do something for her, even if it's just fake generosity. Even if I betray her in the end, I can at least leave something for her to survive. I hold on to her hands. Aju, listen to me. There's no way we can build a boat that can set out to sea with just the two of us. We don't have money, no help, and we don't have any experience with boat making. That's why we need a recoup for a while. To recoup for a while. Right. In order to build an organization that can save the world, we need money, and we need to prepare. It's too rushed if we act now. We don't have enough funds if I'm the only one who's working. But I don't know how to do other people's work. I can't help you. No, there is a way. I will teach you how to work and earn money. But if the aliens recognize me, that's fine. There's work where you're not required to show your face. A lot of work can be done at home. I can find something for you. The pay might be low, but there's enough to survive. It might be possible, but you already keep coming over and also need to teach me how to work now. Won't that be too tiring? No, I won't need to come here. Eh? Eju, for the time being, why don't you come to my house? Eh? Can I? Of course you can. Then you can also try to speak with other people other than me. No way, the people outside are all brainwashed. If they see me, then don't let them discover your successor. As a successor, it shouldn't be too hard to fool a person who's been brainwashed. Hmm. Asia seems to have been won over. Finally, she lowers her head. Then, can I really? Can I really live at your place? Of course. That should be fine. Even if I betray her, she can still earn a living by herself and integrate into society. Asia holds my hand and I suddenly grip onto it. Our hands are intertwined as if they are chained together. Asia and I are both locking ourselves in each other's hands. Only by that do we have the courage to continue to walk back into this cold, harsh world. Fuzzy. Chapter 5. Is that a promise? Going into Chapter 6. <laughs> degenerate. What the hell? Every dog has its day. Don't you call us a dog? And we're no degenerate. Floating clouds will eventually converge and become rivers. When I used to read classical poems, I thought the poets were exaggerating. I never thought I'd come to the same conclusion today. I've seen the rain so many times, and it never gave me such a feeling. If I have to ask myself what's different today, it's probably because I'm in a good mood. Meh. I feel a pull on my sleeves. It's Aju, who's following me from behind. According to her, the city is controlled by aliens. If she doesn't hide herself away, the police who are controlled by the aliens will come after her. Aju is totally caught up in her spy game. As we walk along the road, she keeps surveying the streets, face flushed, watching out for any secret police that might be hiding out in the alleys. Of course, the secret police don't exist. We're only walking home. For me, I'm more concerned about the day-to-day -day stuff, such as where I should put Aju's luggage, whether there's enough food in the fridge, and how many hours children are supposed to sleep. Aju pulls my sleeve again. Sorry, I got distracted again. Come on. Are you tired? 
Need a rest? Are you tired? I'm okay. Then I'm okay. For goodness sakes. It's almost like you are a part of our imagination. All I can do is shrug my shoulders. That's typical of Aju. After that, Aju starts staring at the tram signs. She stands on her toes and looks at the number on the sign. Her face is covered with excitement. Is that a public transport? It's the tram. Uh, electric buses. Anyone can take it. Then how come there's not a single tram on the road? The aliens must have cut them off. No, it's called this has been in the middle of the night and trams don't run in the middle of the night. It's late at night, but trams aren't running anymore. During the day, there's a tram every half hour. It's always on time. Look at a timetable. Hmm. I don't expect there to be trams here. Maybe it's because this is an isolated island. Look, you can have a tram on an isolated island. Hey, you can have a I you can have an island on an island. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> they don't have them in other places. I thought I told you there are limitations to how much we. Oh, for goodness sakes, you keep going on about this alien thing. You're covering up something here, Aju. Maybe you're the alien. I blink. Honestly, my mind keeps wandering elsewhere whenever she starts rambling about her so-called trivial knowledge. That's why, to prevent humans from escaping the earlier control zones, they've destroyed all human transportation. Of course, yes. It wasn't easy convincing her to enter the city, so I decided to play along for now. There are actually a few ports on Painhu Island. There are many fairies running according to a schedule. I better not say anything to her for now. Looks like the aliens on Painhu Island already have total control of this island. That's why it doesn't matter if there are traps. Whoa, the aliens over here are pretty amazing, huh? <sighs> Aju lightly nods her head and clenches her fist, as if she had been riled up by a formidable enemy, with blood rushing through her veins. I give her a pat on the head. If there are pedestrians on the street, they probably think we're siblings. No, for someone like Aju, I'm probably a middle-aged uncle. <laughs> wow. I shake my head and snap out of those thoughts. It's already midnight, but we haven't eaten anything yet. I'll just make something when, with what's left over in the fridge. Then I'll have her take a shower, and then I'll arrange a room for her. I'll sleep in the living room, since I'm used to falling asleep on the couch while watching TV anyway. Normally I've felt the journey from the ruins back home in a, in a, it's a difficult walk, but today we finished it in no time. It must be because I've been thinking and looking ahead to the future. The chipped plant on the staircase rails, the dimly lit, damp corridor, the notice on my door urging me to pay the rent. They all feel so fresh and new. Since I've decided to bring her home to live with me, I'd say goodbye to my old lifestyle. I stop in front of my door, Asia also ceases her footsteps. Is this your home? Right, it's also yours. Nope, it's our home. This is our home. I repeat that in my mind a few times. I suddenly feel my eyes turning blurry. It's been such a long time since I've felt what it means to be alive. The next morning I am placing the discount bread onto the shelves. And Lexion is there. Hey, is everything alright? What does she mean by that? I knit up my brows sinking deep in thought. It took me a while before I realised what she- Exactly! Did you not click that altogether? To Luxian, I'm still the useless garbage that's living in my own fantasies on the verge of going insane. In fact, that's all her misunderstanding, but I can't explain Aju's situation to her, so I just give her a shrug. Don't worry, I'm totally fine. Thank you for not spraying the beans, I'll probably, I promise I'll repay the money I took from the store, so don't worry. Is your boss within hearing range? Luxian raised her eyebrows as if she had been force-fed a spoonful of bitter medicine. Why do you say- <laughs> Yeah, why do you sound so... fake? Hmm, really? Honestly, I don't really care what she thinks of me. The only thing I'm concerned about is what to cook for Aju tonight. Normally, I buy some frozen packaged food from the store, but I can't have her live like how I used to. I should put some effort into dinner tonight. I thought my con conversation with Veluxian had already ended, but she's still standing there with no intention of leaving. I eye her impatiently. 
Hey, Luxian, are you skipping your shift again this afternoon? Luxian remains silent for a while. I know it's my fault, but is that how you think of me? I'm sorry, but I'm not available this afternoon. I found another job to, and need to head there for work. You have another job? That's sudden. I only decided on it yesterday. I'm sorry, I can't help you anymore. Luxian continues to crest her eye, her brows here. Yeah. Eh, I'll find a way to repay you some other way. It's not like I want you to repay me. Really now? There's something she seems to want to say, but I'm too busy to figure out what her motives are. It just feels like today you have a different kind of energy. Right? Why do you suddenly need a second job? Are you short on money? If there's money troubles, you can talk to me. No, we're not going to be indebted to you. I have an extra person to feed. It goes without saying that I need more money. But I don't want to treat Asia as a burden. Instead, she's a catalyst that can force me to take my life more seriously. Now, I just think I've been too laid back in the past. I want to work harder from now on. I think you already work really hard. You too. Just don't spend all your time with your boyfriend. You need to think about your future as well. Can't believe now Jan's for one nature of me. Yes! Then do you still need me to help out with your shift? Actually, I already told the boss I'll be taking the day off this afternoon. Really? Great. Lovely. Fantastic. Before she just let me know and then sneak away like a cat, but this time she actually asked Mr. Child for a day off. I can't wrap my head around her actions. It's okay if you need help. How can I keep troubling you? Besides, you've been in bad shape recently. After saying that, she bows her head slightly and leaves. Good riddance. When Lexion is acting all polite and proper and even shows concern towards me, she looks just like a big sister. But my heart still feels a bit uneasy. It's probably because I'm more used to the luxury but keeps throwing messy tasks at me and keeps toying around with me. Her change of attitude is baffling to me. I leave the store at noon and immediately rush over to my next workplace under the boiling heat. It's a printing shop. The sharp looking owner comes over to greet me. Looks like you've worked at a lot of different places before. So you should be able to pick this up pretty quickly. Yes, yes. We're not that short on staff, but since you're short on money, I decided to lend you some help. I'm not expecting anything special. Just stay out of trouble. Be nice, okay? The shop owner gives me a strong pat on my shoulders. I quickly nod my head. The printing shop is right at the doorstep of Pinhue University. It's the first day of the semester. The shop is filled with people who are looking for printing services. Bro, is my cover finished yet? Okay, please give me a moment. Hey, why is, why is there only 499 sheets? I'm missing one. Please wait. I'll find it for you. While taking care of the customers, I imitate how the owner operates the printers. I also have to remind myself not to forget to collect the money. In the narrow shop, a few printers are pumping out hot air. From time to time, I have to walk over and fix any machines that are not working properly. It doesn't take long for my shift to be soaked in sweat. Not sure on staff. The shop owner can't be for real, but I'm in no position to complain. After a while, the number of customers has finally dwindled down. I can finally catch a breath. Hey, new guy, brew, up a cup of cu brew me a cup of tea. A face suddenly pops out from a corner of the shop. He's sitting down, surrounded by a few huge printing machines. I didn't notice someone else was there. He's young, probably younger than me. But what did he just say? The shop was so busy just before, and he never came out to lend a hand. Now he's treating me like a servant. I got some important work here. I can't work if I'm thirsty. If I mess up because of you, you are... No, that's your responsibility for not quenching your own thirst. Okay, okay. I walk, uh, I walk to the back of the shop. I found a tea set, but there's only an empty tea can. There's no tea left. It's hot water, okay? Hey, new guy, I said tea, not water, duh. But there's no tea. 
Don't you know how to buy stuff? <sighs> if I go and buy tea with shop owner, most likely won't pay for it. This kid won't be paying either. This means I'll be paying it out of my own pocket. What, you got something to say? Are you asking for trouble? <sighs> yeah. I'll walk out the door with my head lowered. Where are we going? To the convenience store? He's still on the phone when I finished brewing the cup of tea and sent it over to his desk. He has a smug face when he laughs. I can hear a woman's voice on the other side of her phone. Looks like this call has nothing to do with work. There's a messy pile of scratched paper on his desk. Looks like he's designing signs for people. But he doesn't look like he's working. He's basically just twiddling his thumbs here. I silently place the tea as a, at the corner of his desk. He glares at me and twitches his lips. What you looking at? Do your work. I heard what you and uncle were talking about. You're short of money, right? Then you better be nice, okay? That, young man, goes for you too. I see. He's shop owner's nephew. That's why he can be so arrogant, yeah. That's the problem with people who are family related to the boss. Because they feel like they can just act whatever they want to act by. And feel they don't get any um, consequences of that matter. I walk away. My footsteps heavy. I can hear this conversation from behind. Just saying, oh, just train up the new guy. <laughs> Nothing impressive. An old guy. No spirit at all. Right? Just like a dog. For a moment, I sense that both my legs are giving away. What the heck am I doing? I can't help but murmur to myself. I'm not supposed to be a short of money. If I hand age you over to the police, but I don't have to endure this physical exploitation and spiritual slavery. But I've already chosen this path. There's no way back. Don't worry, my friend. There is always a U-turn somewhere. I have to let go of my useless pride and become a working machine. That arrogant kid is right. I need to work like a dog. Classes at the university have ended. The printing shop starts to get busy again. Many new faces keep walking in. They must be treating me like a ticket gate at the train station. When I finally left the printing shop, the sky has already got dark. It's already past my usual dinner time. I smell something burning as I reach home. My nose winces. It's not hard to imagine what I would find. I can only silently pray, silently pray and hope it doesn't come true. Hearing me open the door, Aji runs out from her bedroom with a snapping sound clashing on the floor. My slippers are too big for her. She isn't really wearing it properly. Besides that, I notice her clothes have been charred slightly black. Jan, have you been eating? Have you eaten? <laughs> Not yet. Aji heaves a sigh of relief and lets out an ego expression. I cook something. Let's no, let's not, okay? I'm not eating it. <laughs> Just as I thought. I'm sorry. I'll be returning a bit late from now on. You can eat first. You don't have to wait for me. How could I? I'll be lonely if I eat all by myself. The same goes for you. Eh, yeah, I guess so. I've been working the whole day. My mind's still a bit numb can't quite make out what Aja is saying. All I want is to fill up my stomach. I walk over to the kitchen. Um, actually, what I want to say is I did cook something, but it didn't go very well. Don't worry, we can smell from down the stairs. Just as I thought, she doesn't look like someone who can cook. And she has to cause even more trouble for me. That's probably the confidence of a successor. I look at the food inside the wok. She added too much sauce. The whole dish has turned into an, unidentifi an unidentifiable black object. I taste it a bit. Both sweetness and saltiness are fighting for dominance inside my mouth. My stomach is turning. I'm unable to swallow. Asia is still standing beside me. What kind of reaction should I give her? If I have to eat this every day after work, I'm not confident I can keep working like this. However, if I discourage her now, it's probably not good for my plan to reintegrate re her into society. I can't make up a fake smile and offer her praise, but I can't give her a disgusted look either. I'm too tired to think straight and make a decision. I'll make a stew. It should be done in half an hour. Let's have it together. 
My face remains expressionless, speaking with a flat tone. Goodness sakes. I cut up some meat and vegetables, stir fry it a little, and then add some water to turn it into a stew. I just casually add whatever in ingredients I have. But taste isn't going to be that bad, and it's nutritious too. This is the signature dish of a bachelor. Asia initially looked confused when I started cooking, but quickly lowers her head with a sullen look. Asia isn't a stupid kid. She must have figured it out. After finishing my soup, her black object will not be eaten anymore. The dish she put so much effort to will be ruthlessly thrown into the bin. She must know that I'm just being considerate for not telling her directly. Asia's nose keeps sniffing as she prepares the cutlery and rice. While she might have accepted reality, it must have left a bad taste in her mouth. Dinner's ready. Asia lets out her usual smile. I also squeeze out a grin with my tired face. <laughs> Goodness sakes. Asia and I sit on opposite ends of the table. A stew is placed in front of us. As for Asia's dish, she has already silently thrown it away. I put some of the vegetables into my own bowl and then pour the soup into the rice. Asia's rice is not very cooked, so when the soup is poured in, the rice becomes fresh again. But since this is her first time, it's already pretty good. Asia keeps poking her food. She doesn't seem to have much of an appetite. What should I do now? Should I console her? Tell her I'm really touched. Tell her although she hasn't succeeded, but her message is already conveyed. I lower my head in reflection. What am I thinking? I have to say, I'm a bit happy. But this happiness is also mixed with pity of having wasted food and, compl sorry, and complaint for her pointless effort. I'm unable to tell her my true feelings. It's like after bumping into a pedestrian while crossing the street. It's not easy for both of us to say excuse me. That's why there's a stiff and solemn air pervading in the room. Although there's warm lighting, hot dishes and two people sitting opposite each other, it doesn't have an atmosphere of two people having dinner together. It even feels more torturous than eating all by myself. Hmm. You can't keep living this life, man. Um. Oh. At the same time, we both want to break away from this solemn mood, but our voices clash with each other as we both try to speak. Unfortunately, this isn't a scene where the couple is going to confess to each other. We both lose the courage to continue, allowing the solemn atmosphere to linger. In the end, I'm the one who take the initiative. So, what is it you wanted to say? I use my most gentle voice to speak to her. Actually, I drew something. The phone is going off just when she begins to say something. The phone rings. Sorry, gotta get the phone. You can eat first. Aju has her gaze pointedly fixed on me as I leave the table. I notice that she hasn't eaten anything from her bowl. Great. Ah, okay. This is the printing shop manager. How's it going, mate? You didn't mess up at the, photo at the printing shop, did you? Of course not. Thanks for your intro, bro. Eh, no worries. I just thought you could meet some uni students. Broaden your horizons. Juji is a broker that has helped me a lot. He's now helping me to find a third job. I persuaded Asia to live here. My reason to her being is that she finds a casual job at home. After making enough money, we can build a boat more efficiently. And finally, she can go and save the world. But that's not my real intention. Hmm... What I really want is to have Asia reintegrate into society, and after we part ways, she can still make a living. At that moment, Asia is still lacking a prerequisite for entering society. Education. Asia should be the age where she's at high school. Of course, I can't suddenly make her go to school, but I hope I can at least help her gain some practical knowledge she can use to live off. Whether it's books, keeping, typewriting, or culinary skills. People like me who don't have any special skills have to live in pain every day. I've experienced it firsthand. That's why I need to send Asia to a vocational school so she can learn. But then 
I need a lot, lot of preparation, which all comes down to money. Whenever you want to do something in your life, the number one thing that is always going to... Actually, sorry. The second thing. Number two. The second most important thing that's going to be always in your way is money. Is there enough of it? But of course, the first and most important thing that's always in your way is yourself. I repeatedly confirmed with Zhu Ji. So, there are only dishwashing jobs left during the night time. Yeah, I've been searching every nook and cranny. See? Where can you find such a good boss as he is? Thank you. I'll take it. Having said that, dishwashing isn't easy. You've done it before, so you should know. Can you really handle three jobs at once? It's okay. I'm just a bit... Jeez, I understand. I won't pry. I'll keep looking out for you. You can just switch over if there are better jobs out there. How about it? Thanks. I'll buy you a beer next time. Save it for yourself. I know you're working hard to make money. I can't let you treat me. Okay, that's it for now. It's time to watch KK. Kiki. I hang up and stare out the narrow window. The night feels heavy and it's suffocating me. Nearly every worker who comes to the city has done dishwashing. That sense of fatigue runs deep in your bones. I return to the table and wolf down the remaining food. Asia just keeps staring at me. Um, Yan, I... Sorry, but can you wash the dishes today? I'm a bit tired. I'm gonna hit the sack. Asia shrinks her neck, as if she's been bitten by a snake. I'm sorry. I'll work hard on housework. Then thank you. Tomorrow, do you have some free time? I applied for a new job recently, so I'll be returning home even later than tonight. I'll help you cook every day. You can eat it yourself. As she bites her lips and nods, her expression is a bit pitiful. I can only hear a long sigh. I got a day off on Friday. Is there anything we can talk about it? So, if there's anything we can talk about it, then okay. All right. Aisha's eyes brighten up. I lay down on the couch, my mind all boggled up. Everything that happened today keeps replaying in my mind. The boiling hot sun, the smug look on that shop assistant, Luxian shocked, shocked stare, Juji's phone call at the wrong time, and Aisha's final unwavering smile. I feel like I've done something wrong, or maybe I haven't. If I can be less tired, but maybe I could have more time to think this through. For now, I can only let my consciousness slip into a bottomless abyss. For some reason, a nostalgic clip flashes by. It's the Kiki I've seen in my childhood. She's facing the camera, letting out a cheerful smile. Why am I suddenly thinking about her now? I fall asleep with this question on my mind. Humans are creatures of habit. For the first two days, I was so tired. But after that, I can't feel anything anymore. Every morning, I clock in at a convenience store, numbly count the stock, and then take a quick nap with my eyes half closed. After handing over the shift to Luxian, I chew on a piece of sandwich and rush over to the printing shop. Recently, the owner's nephew and his girlfriend seem to be having a spat. He's always cursing lately. As a punching bag, I'm receiving most of a blow. Now, I actually look forward to the students coming into the store. In the contrast, the dishwashing job is, a to is totally a mechanical movement. I start working after the foreman finishes briefing. When the shift ends, someone will come and replace me. The dim lights together with pungent soap and icy cold water is excruciatingly unbearable. I hardly have any left energy left at the end of the day. Today is Friday, but it's not my rest day. I lied to Aishu. I only took a day off from dishwashing place. Aju looks too pitiful. I should take time off to spend a night with her. Taking a day off occasionally should be fine. If I keep doing that though, I might get fired. She, she gave a lot of effort to find this job for me. I shouldn't give him a hard time. When I arrive at the stairs, the sky is just about to turn crimson. Looks like I arrived half an hour earlier than usual. Strangely, there's a suspicious person in front of our door. That person is cloaked in black and standing in front of my flat conspicuously. The protagonist's mother? 
I immediately raise my alarm. Are there actually thieves at picklocks in the city, just like in the movies? The corridor is empty. No one else can help me, but I'm not afraid. The person doesn't look big. Besides, I've already accumulated a lot of stress at work. I was fretted about having nowhere to let it out. I slightly walk over. Okay, the cloaked man is busy with something so he doesn't notice me approaching. And then I leap forward and push the man down. Oh, great. Great. It's our friend. What are you doing down here? The black cloaked man lets out a piercing scream. Her voice is sharp but soft. Her body is more tender than I thought. It's Aju. Shouldn't she be waiting for me inside? Come to think of it, that suspicious looking black cloak is an old jacket from my flat. I quickly help her up. She grips my hand and shrinks in my chest. I feel a bit guilty seeing her eyes appear appearing all watery. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were a thief. I gently rub her elbows. She feels slightly itchy and quibbles in my chest. Fortunately, she doesn't look hurt. I hand over some juice I brought on the way home as a conversation. Asia is wide as her eyes. Is this juice? You don't have to be that surprised. No, it's just that I haven't had juice for a while. Thank you. Now that I think about it, recently she's just been having a stew with a having stew with a bachelor like me. Okay, we used to share sweets and snacks while we're at the ruins. I see. It must be a special day. She doesn't get it. In order to send her to a vocational school, I already made some money, but the money isn't used to buy snacks for her. In the past, I've been living life in the slow lane, leading a rather dull life every day. Meeting Aju was my way to let off some steam. That's why, that, that's why I was in the mood to buy some sweets for her. But now, I don't even have time for myself. After returning home, I don't even have energy to speak with Aju. I'm supposed to be earning money for her. However, we've become so distant. Am I getting my priorities wrong? Right. I should be more concerned about her. Now's the best time to do that. Why are you out? What are we going to do if you are seen by, by the secret police? I quickly rephrase my wording halfway. I better be careful and play along with Zhu for now. Suddenly she appears nervous. Yarn, the aliens have already found this... Really now, yes, of course. Oh, it's too dangerous here. Come inside first. <sighs> Not abiding by this alien theory. It's just so... <laughs> it's so face-palming. As you pulls me into my flat and locks the door looking edgy. Hmm, so what actually happened? Someone keeps knocking on the door when I'm home. When I looked through the peephole, it was someone I've never... Yeah, of course... I'm the only one that you know. This rented flat can only accommodate one person. While friends are allowed for short stays, they can't stay long term. That's why I asked Aishu to ignore everyone. Also, that person comes every day. It's so scary. I see. Maybe they're coming to collect the electricity or water bills. I'll speak with them tomorrow. They're not here to collect any bills. It must be the secret police sent by the aliens. I yeah, of course, yeah. That's the only kind of information that you provide to us about these aliens is the fact that they're just this name, that name. There's no discrepancy or uh, what you would call... There's no specificness with these aliens. It's just secret police, aliens, island controlled by aliens. Like, you don't even describe what these aliens look like. Like... You have a very, very basic imagination of what these aliens are. How would... No, the secret police won't discover this place that quickly. Look at me. I'm just an ordinary worker. There are thousands of people like me in the city. If I blend in... They only found out after the secret police left I went to investigate. Asia quickly rebucks me with a serious look on her face. For a moment I really thought the secret police were bearing their claws and chasing after us. Uh, the secret police posted this on the door. She then hands over a piece of paper she's been gripping tightly. After picking it up and taking a look, I only burst into tears. I've seen this notice many times. <laughs> it's been noticed from the TV station. <laughs> oh dear. 
First one I remember our TV at home is still broken. When I first met Aji, the TV was already broken. But I never had a chance to get someone to fix it. After meeting Aji, I didn't have time to watch TV anymore. So the whole thing just slipped my mind. The notice clearly states that the TV station is concerned about their audience's satisfaction. In the coming days, I'll be sending repairmen to every household and hope I'll be at home by then. Look like the mystery has been solved. The person who came here wasn't the secret police, but just a TV repairman. They thought nobody was home. That's why we put up a notice. And Aju tore away the notice before I came home every night. That's why I never knew about it. If it were not because I came home early today, the TV might have stayed broken forever. It's a search warrant for the secret police. If we pretend the warrant we fell off and we don't see it, didn't see it, they won't be able to come into our house. So that's how Aju's logic goes. So what I thought was her picking the lock was actually her trying to tear away the notice. Then why are you dressed up like that? I wave a black jacket in my hands. This play this is a necessary sacrifice with really now. Uh, Aju says it with a solemn expression, but it only looks ridiculous to me. Since I'm secretly tearing away the notice, I might get sentenced. If they discover me, I'll just uh, I'll just say I'm a loiter and have nothing to do with this household. So you wouldn't get caught. Well, she's got an imagination. Okay, I think I got the gist of it. Tomorrow I'll stay at home and let them in. Why? If ever secret police in by the aliens. Honestly, I've been working a whole day and feel very tired. I just want to get this over with quickly. You're right. They're the secret police. That's why they. So that's why we need to let them in. I'll handle them while you hide inside the bedroom. The saying goes: the safer place to be is where the danger is. Once the secret police have searched our house, then we're safe. Mm, it does make sense. After thinking for a while, Aju finally accept, accepts my suggestion. But there's one thing I need to ask. Aju, why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? That the secret police came and knocked at our door. That you tore away the warrant. Those things. She seems to be caught off guard and lets out a complicated expression. Aren't you busy? I know you must be very tired out there. I don't want them to hurt you. Um, was I wrong? <sighs> I guess next time I should let you know first. I'm always so clumsy and can't do anything right. This time, it's only because of you that we have a way to deal with a secret... There's no secret police! There's no secret police in this universe. If I keep telling them one, they'll find out. Sorry, Yan. I'll let you know next time. No, you're not wrong. I am very busy recently, and it's going to get busier. Then... Nothing. It's just... I don't want to continue this conversation. I quickly head to the couch. I don't want her to hear me blurt out the next sentence. I just feel upset about this. The next day I take another day off, so that the repairman could come to, over to fix the TV. Initially I thought I'd be get, greeting a guy in green uniform. I didn't expect an old age woman with a flowery sweater. Son, your little sister is really naughty. Her hair is white. A pair of glasses sits on top of her head. Her body smells of incense, reminding me of my grandma back home. I lead her to the living room, offering her some tea. Aju stays hidden inside her room. Although the grandma takes slow steps, her hands are skilled. She fiddles with the TV while striking up a conversation with me. You know, I already retired from the factory, but I can't just stay at home and let myself run away, so I found some work in the neighborhood. Your TV warranty has already expired, but the factory needs to guarantee that every household can watch TV. That's why they asked a helper like me to come and fix it. Yeah, because with this kind of day and age, with the world that it is at the moment, I think a TV is very necessary to have. Alongside a computer, uh, a, a mobile phone, uh, I don't know, a garden, possibly, a reasonably sized garden. Not everyone has a garden, though, but that's a nice way of getting outdoors without going outdoors. She unscrews the TV case, exposing all the parts inside. If I hadn't been to the ruins, 
I'll probably think that the TV is the world's most complicated machine. As Grandma keeps working, she continues to speak at a leisurely pace. I, how long has this TV been broken for? You must be bored at night. The whole family should spend time together watching TV while having dinner. That's what life should be like. Right, come to think that, I haven't watched TV with anyone for a long time. It doesn't matter what kind of show it is, as long as a few people can watch the same screen and engage in conversation, it's already a very satisfying form of entertainment. My son headed up north to find work. Now I miss him, but he never picks up the phone. See, I haven't seen him for a while. My grandson is about the same age as you. I really want to watch TV with them. Grandma rubs the wrinkles on her forehead as she speaks. I'm at a loss for words. I also left home and refused to pick up the phone. I have watched TV with my parents for a long time as well. Finally, Grandma starts picking up her tools. It seems that it came down to the circuits wearing down due to age. She walks out of the door and gives me a gives out a kind smile. TVs grow old as well, son. You better treasure it. If it breaks down again, I might not be able to fix it. But <laughs> it might outlive me. After Grandma left, I sit on the couch, frozen like a statue. Suddenly, someone turns off the TV. I raise my head. Asia is pouting her lips and standing right in front of me. The secret police have finally left. There might be a spy cam in... I heave a deep smile. The granny isn't the secret police. How long is it going to take before Asia finally accepts the truth? And I thought she could return to normal bit by bit as long as she lives with me. But it looks like I failed. I would have accepted it if it was just a failure. But recently, Aju seems to have grown even more distant. Although she's moved in with me, we spend even less time together than we were at the ruins. I was only playing along with her fantasies, but she isn't willing to tell me her anxieties and secrets. So what am I doing here? I recall what the old lady just said. Aju, are you free later? Aju pauses for a moment. Eh? I'm free? Then let's watch TV together. That's right. We just have to watch TV together. There's no need to second guess each other's thoughts. We don't have to find out top. We don't. You know, we don't have to find topics to chat about. Watching TV can close the gap between us. This is what the old lady had taught me. We can naturally return to how we were. No way! Don't watch TV, huh? This is by far the most dumbest thing you've said, Aju. Like, what am I meant to say? Like, there's no choice in this game, so it's not like we can actually go out of our way to push her back into the ruins. Uh, as you've been telling me every day, I've been too busy lately. I haven't been paying attention to her delusional fantasies. Uh goodness sakes. Asia then runs back into her bedroom. My attempt to break down the barrier between us is all for naught, and it's due to those ridiculous fantasies in her mind. The fantasies in her mind, and comprehension in real life. Which is more important? Can she really not tell? It can't go on like this. Indeed! I can't let her live in this little bubble of hers anymore. Hmm. I stand up and rush into her bedroom, trying to contain the rage within me. I'm not here to argue with you. I just want to speak with you. I don't want to hear it. Hmm. Asia doesn't seem to have a habit of locking the door. Maybe she doesn't expect me to barge in. That's why I enter the room which used to be my bedroom. But this is not how I recall my bedroom to be like. Whoa. The walls are covered with various strange symbols and drawings. Some look like alien spaceships from science sci-fi novels. 
Some look like magical inscriptions, but that's not all. The table and bed are full of nonsensical graffiti. A few water pens and markers are scattered on the floor. If a landlord sees a room like this, they definitely kick us out. And I thought Asia was covering from her delusions. I thought returning her to her normal life would make her abandon these things. It turns out it's just my wishful thinking. But her sickness seems to be suppressed inside this bedroom. In here, her sickness has become more serious. Yan, what's wrong? There's a shocked expression in her eyes. She has no clue what I'm getting at. What is this? I ask her coldly, though I don't really want to know. She's the alien, not us. But just like a floodgate that suddenly bursts open, she starts to speak like a bullet. Oh, come and take a look. This is the new design of our boat. No, it's not a boat. If we invert this graph, the humps, it are, <laughs> the humps are the areas where it's easily damaged. I installed some harder wood over there. That's why I will see this on to find <laughs> If I can see this on the TV, then my companions can hear it. But the TV. Hmm. But when you go out and see some machine with a shape, you must run away. Aju could be an asylum escapist. Someone who escaped from an asylum because she has these delusional fantasies. And she must have had this from a very, very young age to where she couldn't have gone to school because of these delusional fantasies that she's had. Like, like a really young age. Before even going into secondary school. This is a secret passageway to your house. If the aliens discover your place, we can escape using that. Now I'm asking, what did you draw on the wall? Those are in our special language. It's a secret way of communication. The aliens don't understand it. You should learn it too. It's very simple. That way you can also know how to read stuff that has been passed down. Those special languages are covering the whole white wall. It's going to take a lot of time to clean this up. She doesn't get it. I spot her, di her diary spread out on the bed. A strange looking drawing is also printed on the page. She immediately sees where I'm focused at. That's a map. This is a place where I'm born. I don't remember exactly where, but I can still remember what it looks like inside. It's an amazing place. As long as I see the map, I feel warm inside. But I don't really remember what happened there. Because those memories that you're projecting to us are fake. She leans over towards me, but all I can feel is my chest burning and my head spinning. It's no use saying anything to her. I took a day off from my dishwashing work, risking myself getting fired. I never expected to be greeted with this. If Zhuji gets angry at me because of this, I might not, not be able to find another job anymore. Without saying anything, I snatch away the diary and begin tearing it off that page. As the paper is ripped apart, it lets out a piercing sound. I then take out my lighter and set the paper on fire. A pungent scent starts emitting out from the flames. Hmm. Aju's face turns all white. This is the same expression I have when something unreasonable happens to me. I often put on that kind of face. That's why I'm so sure about it. That's why at this moment, I feel a sense of relief that's, hold, that's hard to hold back. That kid from the printing shop probably feels the same way when he picks on me. Why? Why would you do that? Why? Her questions are suffocating me. She has to ask why. But I feel that I can unleash myself. That's right. You've been hiding away in your own little room. Of course you have no idea how cruel the world is outside. Have I spoiled you too much? No matter how far you go, I still forgive you. The world is harsh to adults like us. I don't know how I'm going to face you, Xi, but you're not going to understand. Yeah, you're so weird. Asia keeps murmuring, her hands tightly gripping the hems of her clothes. She's staring at me as if she's staring at a stranger. 
but now try to explain in a way that you can understand. We're now in an alien controlled zone. If you draw things like that, do you know what the consequences are? For both our safety, I have to burn it. But, but I'm scared I won't remember about the place I was born. That's why I drew it. If you burn it, I can't remember. I stay frozen for a moment, but then shake my head. Just forget about those things. Eh? Aju widens her eyes in disbelief. Even if you remember it, is it going to help you fight against the aliens? In the end, you don't even remember exactly where you're born. You can't go back, so these maps are meaningless. But... Just draw a random picture and pretend it's that. You can't prove it anyway. We have to tear all these pictures from the walls down. If a secret police see it, isn't it going to be dangerous? Don't tell me those as well. Yes, burn them all. That's going, that's going too far. I spent a lot of time drawing them. You don't even look at them. I'm not going too far. This is a necessary sacrifice when you're fighting against the aliens. Necessary sacrifice. Right, necessary sacrifice. Go and burn them yourself. Quick, sacrifice them. As you dumbfoundedly repeat the word, necessary sacrifice, I turn around and head out the door. This is for her own good. I can't spoil her. I must have her grow up. I keep murmuring to myself, as if I'm the one that needs convincing. I hear a moaning cry echo out from the bedroom behind me. Papers are torn down from the wall. Somehow, there's a sense of inexplicable relief rushing in me. That night, I went to bed early. It was a dreamless sleep. While my body seems healthy, my heart is already on the verge of breaking down. The next day, I take a tram to work, operating the cash register how I used to. Even if my brain is screaming out, even my heart is seeping out blood, I'll still move forward according to my timetable. When the white card worker in front of me lets out a fake corporate smile, I suddenly see someone at the corner of my eyes. It's Luxian. She's still as pretty and elegant as usual. Even her work uniform looks tidier than mine. Luxian? Luxian notices me. Her brows tighten. What's happened to you? You're not even brushing your hair. Your clothes are all messy. You look... She's sizing me up like a child. Since she used to take care of her siblings, she must have seen through my frustration. While she might not be able to solve my problems, she can at least comfort the agony in my soul. You look scary. I can faintly hear how reality has betrayed my expectations again. I look... scary? Luxian seems to be scared and quickly shakes her head. Sorry, I didn't mean that. I'm just saying your face looks frighteningly pale. Frighteningly. No. What I'm saying is... I don't listen to her anyway. I turn around and head to the shelves. I lower my head. The glass shelves show a reflection of my face. My eyes are like a cake that nobody wants. Locked inside the pastry shelf. Melting away in the corrosive air. Its colour is dull. Leaking out a yellowish liquid. A reeking... And reeking a pungent smell. My relationship with Aju and with Luxian were both deteriorating. For the whole week, I've been busying myself in exchange for such a degenerated relationship. This is a great job. Sorry, this is a great joke, but I'm unable to laugh. Chapter 6 Degenerate. Chapter 7 Meltdown. Snow under snow. And I think, folks, that is a good place to end off this episode. So, I think that our character is starting to face the truth of what is becoming of him. Like, moving Akshu in with him was the worst decision ever. Because she's also taking her fantasies into a much smaller, confined space. Like, in the ruins, she has a lot of places where she can disperse her, her fantasies. But in the one bedroom, she's only focused to that one bedroom to place all of her fantasies and her quote-unquote memories down. So this, in a way, is going to be a meltdown. 
and I can't wait to see what is in it the next episode. So, thank you all so much for watching, guys, and see you all in the next time of Snow Dome. Have a lovely day and take care of yourselves.